I welcome you to this video in which we will be discussing about the backdoor vulnerability that was announced recently in the Xeutils application. So in this in this video we will not be discussing how the vulnerability was discovered or what are the remediations needed. Instead in this video I will be discussing with you what are the fundamentals that are needed to understand the CVE. Since my videos are for cybersecurity enthusiasts or people who have less than five years of experience in cyber security and do not have the necessary exposure to understand the high level research material that gets published on the internet on these vulnerabilities. That is the reason I am covering the fundamentals in this video which will help you to digest the high level research material that is published on this CVE and it will help you to understand um, this vulnerability um, you know, with, with much comfort. So. Um, First, we will discuss about the fundamentals, some Linux fundamentals, and then we will jump into a very brief, short, basic technical analysis of this vulnerability. So let's get started then. Step by step, this is my plan that first I will introduce in the fundamentals to you the Xeutils application, what this application is about, why do we use it on Linux. Then we will discuss about the code libraries in brief because the Xeutil application it uses a library and that library was compromised uh, with a backdoor by the attackers so we will understand what libraries are um, in general then we will discuss about linux os update basics because this library and this application gets distributed to the world through updates and uh, that is the reason um, in fundamentals it is necessary to understand how a Linux system gets its update and uh, how are the applications installed on a Linux system through package managers. After that, we will discuss lastly in the fundamentals about the SSH protocol, what is it and about the OpenSSL. Why we will discuss about SSH pro protocol and OpenSSL because the Xeutils application, the backdoor that was introduced in this, that is going ahead and compromising the SSH protocol and OpenSSL functions. And that is why it is important to discuss the SSH protocol and OpenSSL. After these fundamentals are covered, we will go ahead and then we will do a basic technical analysis in this part of the video about the CVE and see how it is affecting. So let's uh, take the introduction of the vulnerability quickly to build the background and then we will jump into discussing these fundamental concepts then. So introducing the vulnerability to you here, Xeutils is the application and this liblisma is the library that it uses for its functionality. Uh, the liblisma library, it comes bundled with this Xeutils application. And in this library, there was a backdoor malicious code that was introduced. This backdoor malicious code targets the SSH service on the uh, Linux system and then eventually uh, manipulates its behavior to give the attacker a complete remote execution capability, remote code execution capability and authentication bypass capabilities. Some common conditions for this vulnerability to affect are that the Xeutils uh, software version on your Linux should be 5.6.0 or 6.1. Your OpenSSH service on the Linux server should be directly or indirectly dependent on liblisma. Your SSH server should be exposed to public the glibc and uh, gcc these two foundational components should be present and configured in a specific way in order for this vulnerability to take effect so in case if these conditions are not met you don't need to worry in case if your ssh server is not exposed to the internet in case if it doesn't have in case if your open ssh service does not have a direct dependency or indirect dependency on liblisma library then you don't need to worry about this if your Xeutils application is not amongst these, then you don't need to worry about this. Okay, so then let's get started with the basics now. Let's understand what Xeutils application is, why it is used on Linux. So Xeutils application, it is used for compression and decompression, zipping and unzipping data. So um, in Windows, you might have used winzip 7zip applications to zip and unzip data in the same way on linux you have gzip you have uh, bzip um, and then you have xeutils these kind of applications are available for compression and decompression of data now xeutils it is ubiquitous on linux because 
uh, it's a very old application its compression ratio is much better than other zipping applications and uh, it was very well maintained and uh, you know that is the reason xzutils was very much used on linux all over and uh, yeah it's it's sad to see that this application um, applications maintainer uh, has has compromised this application and, and spoiled its reputation now so there are two parts to this application xzutils application a front end the application part which is available to the users using which they interact with the exils um, xz utility uh, so like this in your, in your linux server if you type in xz slash help it will tell you all the commands that are available for you to interact with this application and in the back end the second part it uses this library liblisma library which is nothing but uh, short for lempel ziv marco chain algorithm so this is a formula a mathematical formula a algorithm which based on statistical redundancy it compresses and decompresses the data so this is the back end working so these are the two parts to this application to this utility one is the application part using which you will interact with the application um, to use the functionality and the back end part on the library part uh, which is then providing the compression decompression functionality back end functionality to the application now let's understand what are the libraries because this is the library that was compromised let's understand what are libraries why do we need them in in the software world so code libraries they are like you know a pre-written uh, a code is a, a pre-written code is available for the developers for usage so uh, these these libraries are maintained by communities or by companies um, you know so if, if, if i have to tell you what what is the exact use cases then efficiency is one of the features like since these libraries provide pre-written code that developers can use instead of writing everything from scratch so this saves time and effort which in turn allows the developers to focus on their unique aspects of the applications rather than you know the common functionalities that are already implemented by others uh, for example you know your application might need to communicate over the network it might need to manipulate some images it might need to manage user data uh, so all these functionalities basic functionalities are already provided in libraries so instead of developing everything from scratch you use these libraries and you just concentrate on the unique aspects of your application so for example if i'm developing a new zipping or compression deep compression application tomorrow then in the back end i will not be developing the whole algorithm for compression and decompression i will be simply using a library like liblisma for my zipping and unzipping application in the front end in the application part to which the users would be interacting i would be simply providing some unique features and i would simply com concentrate on writing the code for the unique aspects of my application i will not be writing the backend algorithm so that is the use case of the lab, uh, of the uh, libraries so uh, in in windows and in linux like uh, in windows you have dynamic link libraries dll files called dll that come with the extension of dll uh, in the same way you on linux you have the files that end with the extension so which are called shared object files so just like microsoft provides you some dlls uh, you know a foundation a platform so that your application can run uh, in the same way on linux as well um, linux provides you some os libraries as well as some external third party libraries are also downloaded and used with the applications so um, and and these are called the shared object files and they are um, denoted by so dot so so any any file that you see on linux which has a dot so extension just uh, know that it is a shared object file it's a library so xzutils then it uses this liblisma library for its backend uh, work so i i hope that now the xzutils application and how is how it utilizes this library that is clear to you um, so now let's let's jump to the linux os basics because then we will understand how this library is getting distributed 
uh, in the Linux world to the Linux systems and uh, what that impact is, uh, you know, what is the impact because this library is compromised and if it is distributed to Linux systems, that means, you know, every system that it is distributed to gets compromised. So I will start with very basic first uh, in Linux OS basic section. Um, just like in Windows, Microsoft Windows is a dist um, is the vendor who under Windows brand, they have these different distributions, different versions of Windows, different flavors of Windows. You also have server operating systems as well. Um, I forgot to include them here. So just like you have these different versions of Windows in the same way in Linux world, you have the main Linux kernel, which was... Uh, built like I think in 1990 by um, Linus Trivaldo and based on that Linux kernel these are the different distributions that have come up and these distributions are maintained either by different open source open source communities or different companies Red Hat, SUSE these are commercial distributions so they are maintained by uh, these uh, commercial companies Kali, Debian, these Ubuntu these are mostly maintained by open source communities open source organizations who are contributing and maintaining these distributions so and this then this every distribution has its own update mechanism we will dive into that so that we will understand uh, you know how the update works B before we move on to updates uh, I, I would like to remind you that why we are discussing these basics is so that we grasp the fundamentals that are needed for understanding this vulnerability only when you are familiar with what what libraries are what this application is what linux is how the updates work in linux then you will be able to understand okay how this vulnerability is uh, or how this backdoor that is there in this library is getting distributed to linux systems so let's talk about the updates then in windows you have the built-in feature that is provided from microsoft to update your operating system and the microsoft applications like outlook excel word etc then you also have now something called microsoft store which allows you to install new applications update third-party applications on your system and then microsoft has also uh, provided some command line tools now like uh, you know one get or win get which which are command line tools similar to linux using which you can uh, install third-party applications you can update third-party applications from the repository of microsoft official repository of microsoft so on the linux side you have something called package managers package managers are what the linux distributions use to update the os update the applications update the libraries for example if you're using debian ubuntu or debian based distribution like kali then you will use the command apt uh, if you're on Red Hat, you will use the yum command so to query your yum package manager. If you're on SUSE, you will use the zipper command. Zipper is the package manager for SUSE, open SUSE and SUSE Enterprise both. So, you know, th using these package managers, you will update all the applications that you have on your Linux systems. You will update all the libraries that you have on your system. You will even update your OS and OS related libraries. How does the update exactly work now in Linux? So you have this upstream, the source repository where all the releases are maintained by the maintainers and developers. So um, say this, this exeutils scenario now, um, the exeutils scenario in this, um, the developers and maintainers, they released a new, they developed a new version and then they put it in their distribution repository the source repository from where it gets distributed to all other linux distro uh, distros and then to all other linux clients so any application any developer when that is developed they after that they will create a tarball out of it tarball is simply the exe the executable and then uh, they will make it available for release in their respective repository now the linux distro repositories the main linux um, official linux distro repositories they will query these different different source repositories for these different applications they will pick up these packages from there they will format them in their own um, you know uh, linux distro language 
they will test them validate them and then they will make it available in their official repository for download so on a linux client you will use a package manager like apt zipper etc you will use that you will query your package manager for an update your package manager queries the linux official distro repository that is uh, responsible for your linux distribution and then it gets the update on your client so this is how it works now what happened in the uh, exeutils scenario in the exeutils scenario the exeutils application was uh, developed by lasse collins and it was being maintained by lasse collins the developer uh, for almost 15 years now or more than 15 years i think from um, so so he he was handling he he had developed the application plus he was acting as a maintainer as well for that application he was uh, you know fixing bugs he was bringing out new features in the application all this was um, done by by this guy alone now since it's since it's it's a very widely used application some developers they started contributing to the project some three years ago there was a user a developer with the name of giatan so this is the user account name of uh, the of, of the uh, attackers github account oh, and and of course um, behind this this account there might be a big threat actor group so it's not just one person so this giatan user he started uh, contributing to the exe utils project three years ago he started fixing bugs in the application he started fixing uh, bringing out new new patches new features and uh, initially he did not have the permission of maintainer on this source repository so what he used to do he used to develop uh, he, he used to develop a code that fixes some bug or maybe he developed a code that will bring out a new feature in the application he used to ho host it in in his own repository and then open a pull request with the developer pull request as in he would send an email official email open a pull request and then ask the developer to pull this code from from the repository and uh, test it and then you know make it available for release so like this he was contributing to the projects fixing bugs fixing bugs bring out new features uh, and uh, you know so, so like this the trust was gained uh, over the time so over the time lasse collins started trusting this giatan user and then eventually there was a campaign a social engineering campaign to uh, force lasse collins to give the maintainer right to giatan for this repository so once the maintainer permission was given to giatan giatan introduced the backdoor code in this lab in this library that is used by the xeutils application and that comes bundled with it and then he released it in its official repository and uh, you know the linux distros different linux distros like red hat open suse suse kali they all started pulling the updated version from this upstream source repository and then they started making it available in their official repository the linux the package manager usually is recommended to update the packages automatically just like in windows you microsoft recommends you to keep the automatic updates on in the same way you know package manager they uh, are mostly configured to update the clients automatically for, for any new updates and um, and patches so you know the client started getting updated but this was caught in um, you know very early like the code was introduced and just after that in two weeks this this was caught and that is the only reason that a uh, lot of linux clients did not get this new update and uh, you know this 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 huge impact was saved and and uh, that's why the researcher who um, sorry not the researcher the software engineer who discovered this vulnerability uh, you know he, he's getting the credit that he's he has uh, saved the linux world and that that's very true because if this was not discovered within two weeks if this was available in the linux os official distribution repositories and then imagine if clients got updated with this world over then the whole world would be compromised i mean the whole linux world so that's um, that's about the updates how they work in linux 
now let's understand the ssh protocol and open ssl because the exit util applications the backdoor that was introduced in this this is going ahead and compromising the ssh service uh, in a way that the ssh service is bypassing the authentication for the attacker let's understand how that happens let's first cover the basics of ssh protocol so just like in windows there is uh, the remote desktop protocol that is used by the remote desktop application in the same way SSH um, you know is a secure protocol that is used in Linux uh, for taking the command line access and transferring file over the network in an encrypted secure way using a utility like OpenSSH so RDP is again a Windows protocol it also uses encryption and RDP using the RDP application you can uh, communicate over the RDP protocol in the same way um, SSH is an encrypted protocol uh, giving you a command line access of your Linux uh, devices and uh, you can do this using a utility like open SSH or any other utility so the SSH protocol it it is used by uh, one of the most uh, again open source uh, uh, you know you know software like open ssh which is a secure networking utility it's a suit of secure networking utility so open ssh is also very ubiquitous in linux world it's 90 percent of 90 95 percent of linux world is is works on open ssh and many distros they come pre-installed with the open ssh uh, utility and the server runs the open ssh service and it uses ssh protocol in the back end now OpenSSH also uses OpenSSL. OpenSSL is again a, a different utility. It's a different open source project which is used uh, for mainly providing the cryptographic functions, mainly securing your uh, communication. So OpenSSH is a utility that, will, that you will use for remote or publishing remote service. And then OpenSSL is for cryptographic service, making it secure. So just like uh, you know in the, in the remote desktop protocol re remote desktop is a protocol rdp is the application and you in microsoft you use something called s channel secure channel which is a uh, suit provided by microsoft that uh, secures your communication in the same way in linux world you have open ssl so let's talk about secure channel s channel which is a authentication protocol suit provided by microsoft in windows systems and using this s channel suit your uh, public key authentication is possible when you communicate over email when you take remote access when you authenticate uh, with a website uh, you know all the tls and all these versions everything is, uh, is is provided through this s channel suit on a windows environment uh, open ssl is equivalent to this it's analogous to the S channel in the Linux world. OpenSSL provides you with the cryptographic functions. It will provide you all this functionality, making your uh, communication secure. So using a SSH client, when you communicate with the OpenSSH server, your communication that is secured using the OpenSSL. So I hope here the SSH protocol, the OpenSSH server, all these basics are, are clear to you. Uh, now we will jump into the brief technical analysis so now that we have understood what exit util application is what code libraries are how the updates work what ssh protocol is let's understand the relation between exit utils applications backdoor and ssh protocol how it is compromising it and what exactly is happening okay so as we discussed previously that ssh service on on a Linux environment, it depends on the OpenSSL library for encryption decryption for uh, you know its cryptographic function. Now this SSH service, it is indirectly dependent on this liblisma library as well that is supplied with this exeutils. Now how? I mean the SSH service, SSH service, it is not doing any compression decompression, right? Uh, it is a authentication uh, it, it is a service that authenticates and provides um, you know the, the, the remote access but uh, you know wh why is it linked with this liblisma that is the question it is 
it does not have a direct dependency or on liblisma but it has a dependency through system d now system d d means daemon in uh, linux which simply and the equivalent of daemon in windows is service so system service and system d uh, is is a service on uh, linux which is used for starting stopping services shutting down the system rebooting the system and, and there are a lot more linux administration use cases for which system d is used in linux so ssh is directly dependent on system d system d further is using liblisma for some compression decompression functionality so it is dependent on liblisma library and this liblisma library has this malicious backdoor which was which came bundled with this exe utils application and hence since ssh has this indirect dependency now it has this link now through system d it gets compromised and this is how the malicious backdoor is able to inject itself into ssh now on my uh, two linux boxes kali and suse in my lab i was able to uh, run these commands to uh, you know verify this indirect dependency so here if you uh, run this command read elf hyphen d then you will find out the direct dependencies the direct needed libraries by this ssh service here in this list you don't see liblisma you just see libsystemd further if you query libsystemd for uh, you know with the read elf you will find that libsystemd is dependent on liblisma so since ssd is dependent on libsystemd it is also dependent on liblisma indirectly and that is how the relation is and that is how the exploit is able to get hold of the ssh service i was able to verify this in my suse um, you know lab box as well there i ran the same commands again the same point like ssh service is using libsystemd uh, you know in the direct dependency it is liblisma is not listed here but when you query libsystemd liblisma is a direct dependency of libsystemd and then ssh is becoming indirectly uh, dependent on liblisma so what happens then uh, you know due to this dependency due to this link due to this linking of dependencies so when you start a ssh service on your um, you know on your on your linux server when you start this service when this service starts it loads this malicious shared object file shared object as as i told you that it is a library file it loads this because it has a indirect dependency it is linked to this through system d so this also gets loaded in the runtime and when this gets loaded in the runtime when the ssh starts the malicious code is able to go ahead and inject the ssh service and the ssh service since it's using the open ssl library this malicious code is going ahead and hooking itself to the open ssl rsa public decrypt function of open ssl library this rsa public decrypt function uh, this the malicious code is able to hijack and uh, so while after hijacking then when the ssh server believes that it is calling this rsa public decrypt function it's not calling this rsa public decrypt function it's actually calling the backdoor that is how this after this hooking it is able to manipulate the ssh behavior so due to this when the ssh server is actually calling the backdoor what is happening is in this ssh server uh, you know when an attacker is sending a public key with payload this backdoor intercepts this uh, public key with payload and then gives authentication bypass to the attacker straight away by running some command operations how is it able to identify the public key verify the public key of the attacker because here in this back backdoor in this malicious code there is a symmetric encryption key that is hard coded and there is also information hard coded about this public key of the attacker hence when um, this malicious code hooks itself to the rsa public decrypt function and it is able to watch all the conversations on that the open ss server is having during the ss handshake with the clients it is able to uh, you know it it, it it is able to intercept the conversation uh, of the attacker so when a 
genuine client is communicating with the open ssh server the malicious backdoor does nothing it it uh, it remains transparent it allows all the functions to uh, happen normally but when an attacker sends its public key with payload the uh, malicious code uh, since it's it's hard coded with these keys and this information it is able to identify and verify this public key and once that happens it manipulates the behavior of ssh server uh, with some command operations and opens the backdoor for the attacker giving the attacker the capability of remote code execution and authentication bypass now there was a in some articles there was a de debate that it's just a remote code execution capability that the attacker gets that's there's no uh, authentication bypass happening so i was going through some articles going through some uh, posts and, and i found a security researcher's post who has reverse engineered the back door and tested it in his lab and and um, a successful authentication bypass confirmation was published on on uh, twitter so that's it from my side then um, in this overview of the technical analysis if the response to this video is good then i will bring out a second part of this video in which we will do a further deep dive into the code of this backdoor and we will understand uh, you know how it is able to manipulate the logic of the open ssh and um, give authentication bypass and remote code execution capabilities to the attacker now if you are interested to do more deep dive then there's by the researchers there is already a uh, you know box available on github um, you know which is kind of a vulnerable server to dis detect the exploit attempts and to for research purposes this is published you can visit the github repository you can download it from there and play with it and uh, yeah that's it then in this in this part of the video so if you have liked the video please subscribe and share that will give me more motivation to make such videos and uh, if you have some feedback do comment it uh, you know your your commenting would help me to understand whether uh, you know these videos are making difference um, for the newbies in the security uh, fraternity and that will motivate me to make more videos all right then thank you so much for your time i will see you in the next one